So the problem is that if the region affects our instrument, but also directly the dependent variable, basically this is like a confounder and our instrument treat option would be endogenous. So in this short regression, it would be correlated with the error term U um, because uh, the region will be part of the error term because it affects the probability to find a job, but it also affects the treatment assignment. So the correlation between treatment and option on U is unequal zero. So treat option does not satisfy the exogeneity condition that an instrument has to satisfy. We could solve this problem, however, if we add region fixed effects, so we could think of dummy variables for each region as additional control variables to our IV regression. Yeah, so if we add the confounders, if we observe data for the confounders, we can solve um, the problem by adding them as control variables. We still have exogenous variation because the street option is uh, still chosen randomly with the, each region. So that would be a solution to the problem. Yeah, so we would estimate this regression, uh, which I say here region dummy, so it's a, bit, a shortcut form, and uh, where tweet option is kind of the excluded ins instrument. Now, since the region fixed effects are now taken out of the error term, tweet option is basically not correlated with this remaining error term, so it's now exogenous. And, and this works fine as long as we are willing to make the assumption that we did here that the treatment effect itself is homogeneous across region um yeah so the probability to find a new job is uh due to intensive counseling uh, increases by the same amount um in all regions however if we allow for general heterogeneous treatment effects and maybe uh, these heterogeneous treatment effects also depend on the different regions so if we basically are in our rubin causal model framework then just adding the region dummies does not necessarily uh, make our instrumental variable estimator uh, estimate the latter the local average treatment effect so let's go back to the slides where we have explained this when, when I said, what does an IV estimator measure? So this late uh, could also be called as a complier average treatment effect. So the average effect on the intensive job counseling on those people who are willing to accept the counseling. And um, this would be fine if if we have perfectly randomized experiments, but if, if the treatment assignment depends on the region, then just adding the region dummies does not necessarily make our instrumental variable estimator estimate this local average treatment effect. And why not? That's is relatively complicated or I just don't want to go into detail in this course. However, there are other ways how you could compute uh, this latter. So one way would be to also add interaction term between the region dummies and uh, and the treated dummies we have learned that having interaction terms can explicitly account for heterogeneous effects and then we could compute if we have the uh, coefficient for the treatment dummy and also the coefficients for all interaction terms kind of a local average treatment effect um we'll explain this a bit later but there's also another approach that behagel and his courses has chosen and uh, they use so-called weighted regressions with inverse probability weighting. So we have it all right in the studies and I slightly adapted the text here that in the regressions we will use weights computed as the inverse of the estimated assignment probabilities which differ across regions to avoid imbalances between assignment groups. So they use weighted regression um, and using uh, the inverse of the probability that in a particular region a person is assigned to either the treatment group or to the control group. We will see this soon in an example. And in the working paper version, they write in footnote 16 that in the presence of heterogeneous treatment effects, this inverse probability weighting is arguably better than using region fixed effects. One can indeed show that the fixed effect estimator artificially gives more weights to regions where assignment probabilities 
to the control and treatment groups are closer to each other. So what it basically means is that uh, the fixed effect estimator does not compute the average over heterogeneous treatment effects that we actually wanted to compute. Uh, basically, um, uh, it's not this complier uh, average treatment effect, but kind of it, it rates the regions in a funny way, um, um, particular regions where we have a more equal fraction of people in control and treatment group get a larger weight. We won't discuss in any way why that is the case, so you have to dig a bit deeper into mathematics, but it, it, it just makes a point that if you have heterogeneous treatment effects, maybe you do not want to have just a simple uh, region fixed effects. Um, so let's first take a look at how weighted least squares estimator can be done, and it's very similar to the ordinary least squares estimator. So we minimize basically this uh, sum, this weighted sum of squared residuals, uh, where each observation i can get some particular weight wi. If all the weights would be the same for each observation, so for each subject, um, then we would have just the ordinary least squares estimator. But we can put here different weights, and particular this will be this inverse probability weights, which I explain in more detail in an example. Um, and one can also do this via for IV regression. So basically, we would run the two stage least squares regression and uh, use this weights WI in, in both stages. And you can directly use the R functions like IV rec, they have a weights argument uh, for, to which you can supply these weights. Let's maybe look at the example that tries to better explain what this in practice is, this inverse probability rating in a new video.